A few weeks before the first claimed case of COVID-19 came out at Wuhan, British Zoologist and EcoHealth Alliance President and World Health Organization Inspector Peter Daszak had an interview and discussed testing the modified coronaviruses in human cells and humanized mice at the Wuhan Institute of Virology itself. The alleged video was first seen on December 9, 2019, hosted by virologist Vincent Racaniello. It was found that in 2014, the U.S. National Institute of Health funded their group and they actually conducted their research about bat coronavirus at WIV. The second phase of their research that began only in 2019 is said to be dangerous. This is testing of coronaviruses and chimera in rats from the laboratory of Ralph S. Barrick of the University of North Carolina. In his interview, Peter said that a researcher discovered that SARS originated in bats and they even found that there were more coronaviruses associated with SARS. Eventually, they found more than 100. He also said that some coronaviruses can get into human cells in the laboratory and others can cause SARS disease in humanized mouse. According to his interview, the goal of the experiment was to develop a coronavirus vaccine for many types of coronavirus. Peter also said in the interview that it is easy to manipulate coronavirus in the laboratory and the spike proteins drive a lot about what happens. This interview garnered a lot of doubts and criticism because it seems that everything was planned before the pandemic started. The controversy about the coronavirus love leak may have its roots. This is also based on the issue that took place this May 2021 at the Senate hearing in the U.S. on the origin of the coronavirus. There are theories that this may lead to the creation and release of more infectious or deadly organisms. In such an experiment at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, there are scenarios that scientists in a laboratory can test the ability of a virus to mutate by exposing it to different cell types or to mice that genetically engineered into the human immune system. Dr. Anthony Pauzzi, who leads the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, gave a hypothetical scenario that within a laboratory, it might involve an incompetent or inexperienced scientist in a poorly regulated laboratory. If that scientist becomes infected with the virus, that can lead to an outbreak and ultimately trigger a pandemic. In the Senate hearing last May, Senator Ran Raul said in a 2015 letter by Prof. Zheng Li Shi, Ralph Barrick of North Carolina, and other authors, that they included a SARS-like virus with a novel bat virus spike protein and found that it was harmful to the rats according to their study. This allegedly provides evidence that there's a danger in the cave of Chinese bats. Aware of the incident, Prof. Shi denied that she was only conducting a gain-of-function experiment. Peter Daszak, who is also one of the leaders of the experiment, denies the love leak theory. While in 2017, Ralph Barrick's laboratory first introduced Remdesivir, which is currently the only licensed drug to treat COVID. Barrick was also among those people who helped to develop the Moderna COVID vaccine and the new drug against COVID-19. Did the disease spread in a natural way or because there was indeed a gain-of-function experiment that took place? Contradicting to their statement and WHO's investigation into the origins of COVID-19, the official footage of May 2017 reveals that the living bats were kept in cages inside one institute of virology. Most scientists before believed that COVID-19 is transmitted from bats to people with an unknown link. But the lab leak theory shows that it may be intentional. The footage is now an evidence of the possibility that one of those viruses have escaped, perhaps after a gain-of-function experiment that rendered it more dangerous. In the recent hearing of the U.S. House Republicans, they've laid out informations like COVID-19 started months earlier than late December and not in the wet market, 
but this was when 3 Wuhan laboratory workers sought hospital care for an unknown respiratory illness between mid-October to mid-November of 2019. It's not from an animal to human because not even one has been found after testing hundreds of species of the most likely candidates. There is no evidence it was ever in the human community before the pandemic began. It had perfected human-to-human -human spread from the very beginning. That is the hallmark of a lab-created virus. The Wuhan lab was conducting potentially dangerous research on the bat coronaviruses and their ability to cause pandemics, including gain-of-function research. In line with this, how do we know if a person is a SARS-CoV-2 carrier? The reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR, is now the main and gold standard test for detecting SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. However, there are numerous problems that RT-PCR possess, such as fake test results. Last October 2020, it was spread on social media that the inventor of the PCR test, Kerry Mollis, said that, quote-unquote, PCR tests cannot detect free infectious viruses at all. It is not certain that this was directly stated by the inventor because some context is missing. The person who posted the said video left a question of whether the COVID-19 test is a big nonsense. This is not clear because Kerry Mollis died in 2019 before COVID-19 finally spread. However, in July 2020, Dr. Anthony Pauzzi was a guest in a science podcast hosted by Vincent Racaniello. They have talked about the PCR test and how a positive test using a cycle threshold of greater than 35 is essentially worthless. During their discussion, Pauzzi believes that many patients may have been receiving false positive test results. He acknowledged that large numbers of positive COVID-19 cases were from oversensitive tests that pick up mere fragments of the virus rather than the active viable infections. During that time, the U.S. was routinely using 42 to 45 CT value. Dr. Michael Mina, an epidemiologist and assistant professor of the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, said that, quote-unquote, Tests with thresholds so high may detect not just live virus but also genetic fragments, leftovers from infection that pose no particular risk. The positive test result from a PCR test without additional information about viral load cannot be used to determine whether an infected person should self-isolate or their contact should be traced. With the ever-increasing number of COVID-19 cases, how many people are tested in one day using the PCR test? Are all of us aware that there may be false positive records? What city value of PCR tests do we use? Does all accrediting testing center have a city value of 35 and below? There are so many questions and unsure answers. It's been more than a year since this global pandemic started. The public needs solutions to get back to their normal lives. Mass vaccination is the solution for WHO and other major institutions to protect the public from getting and spreading the virus that causes COVID-19. However, there are experts who have doubts on the scientific basis of COVID-19 and its vaccine. One of those is Dr. Michael Yedon, the former VP of Pfizer. He once said that, Quote unquote, you do not vaccinate people who aren't at risk from a disease. You also don't set about planning to vaccinate millions of fit and healthy people with a vaccine that hasn't been extensively tested on human subjects. Other public concerns are side effects. When receiving vaccination, it is common to experience some mild to moderate side effects. According to WHO, COVID-19 vaccines are just like any vaccine. It can cause side effects when someone is vaccinated, the immune system is instructing the body to react in certain ways. It increases blood flow so more immune cells can circulate, and it raises the body temperature in order to kill the virus. 
COVID-19 vaccines have also rare cases of severe side effects like anaphylaxis, thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome, myocarditis and pericarditis, and worse, death. These are rare but expected. The vaccines have only been developed in the past months. Many people are still uncertain of getting vaccinated, mostly because of the fear of side effects. They were made during a very short period of time compared to the usual duration of the vaccine making. And people can't be blamed if they have hesitancy to get vaccinated. Added to that, there are already multiple variants of SARS-CoV-2 that are different from the first virus detected in China. And the vaccine was based from the first one. According to the WHO, the vaccines are not completely ineffective to the new variants because they still provide some protection as these vaccines obtain a broad immune response involving a range of antibodies and cells. However, research is still ongoing into how much vaccines protect not only against disease but also against infection and transmission. If vaccines are proven less effective against one or more variants, there is a possibility to change the composition of the vaccine. As per CDC, there are still chances that some variants might cause illnesses in some people that are fully vaccinated. In January 2021, the WHO chief scientist said that, quote unquote, we need to do everything possible to stop the spread of the virus in order to prevent mutations that may reduce the efficacy of the existing vaccines. In recent studies, vaccines from the earlier version of the virus can be less effective with Delta variant, but two doses of Pfizer or AstraZeneca vaccines can still protect people from getting very ill. They can offer less protection from the new variants, but can still protect against severe illnesses. Aside from vaccines, there are medicines like ivermectin that's said to be a treatment and prevention to COVID-19. However, leading health authorities like the WHO and CDC are consistently against its use and said there's a need for more trials to determine its effectiveness. Still, many health experts and doctors from different countries are still supporting the approval of ivermectin. Dr. Tess Laurie, Director of the Evidence-Based Medicine Consultancy, a world-class researcher and a consultant to the World Health Organization, also argues that all the trials included in meta-analysis show positive results. The only question is exactly how large the positive effect is, and that shouldn't stop the medicine to be approved worldwide. In California, Two local doctors, Dr. Brian Tyson and Dr. George Farid, Imperial Bali physicians, gave their efforts on early treatment protocols using drugs such as hydrocycloroquine and ivermectin. According to them, they had collectively treated patients using these medicines and techniques and had seen good results with most patients. More than 20 countries have now included ivermectin in their strategies to fight COVID-19. In the Europe, Greece, Bulgaria, Macedonia, Slovakia, and Czech Republic are supporting the use of ivermectin. Some South American countries have seen also that having mass treatment with ivermectin will be a big help to manage the transmission of COVID-19. In South Africa, they have strong support to use this antiparasitic medicine against COVID-19. South African health practitioners, public health experts, and medical scientists have campaigned for the approval of the drug. Recently, Indian Bar Association filed case against WHO chief scientists for disinformation over the use of ivermectin because based on their experience, it's a life-saving drug that helped them in managing their pandemic outbreak. In the Philippines, there are Filipino doctors and health experts called for the approval of ivermectin. The British Ivermectin Recommendation Development Group has now recommended the immediate rollout of ivermectin for prevention and treatment of COVID-19. How to end this global pandemic that made people suffer and feel lonely, scared, sad, and worried? 
I am Lovely Montoya of Manila STV.